we'll do a little draft here. We're going to talk about you got one game to go win, current coaches only. What are the top coaches you would pick? And, Coach Dungey, I'm going to let you go first, which is probably a huge disadvantage to me because Hall of Fame coach, but we're going to let you go first and go with your first pick in the draft, and I'll get the next two. I appreciate you giving me the first pick, and I, I don't think there's any question right now. If I've got to win one game and I'm taking a coach, I'm taking Andy Reid. Winning the big games, he, he's uh, kind of manipulating the offense uh, the way he wants it, game planning, uh, coming out the gate hard with those first 15 plays, and also that guy who his team believes in him, and, and they are going to play for him. So if I'm trying to win one game right now, I'm taking Coach Reed. I like it. And that's what I looked at this too. I looked at the guys that we know can do the X's and O's, but the guys that somehow year in and year out, their guys just rally form. And that brought me to my number two guy, Sean McVay with the Rams in LA, just the way that team's rallied around them. I got to be out there a little bit this season uh, to interview Stafford and just seeing their energy getting ready for the playoffs and how they believed, even though the season was a little up and down, it just seems like he finds a way to get those guys ready to go and play in the biggest moments. And I think that obviously no brainer as a guy still holding it down for the old guard, Mike Tomlin at Pittsburgh. It just feels like they can have a great Hall of Fame quarterback like Ben, Ro ben Roethlisberger. They can have guys that we're not sure if they're going to be there next year. Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph this year. And still we look up and we're like, Pittsburgh is in the playoffs again. And I think that comes from the kind of competitiveness, the leadership Mike Tomlin has, and just the way that those guys, was, they say any given Sunday, give us a chance to go play for Coach Mike T. We're going to give it all we got. And I really enjoy seeing what Mike Tomlin's been able to do and obviously why he's still one of the best coaches in the NFL. Coach, who you got next? Well, for my next pick, Devin, I'm going to go to – uh, stay in the AFC North and take John Harbaugh. He's another guy who's done it for a long time. Uh, we kind of forget how good he's been over the years, but he has his team ready to go, uh, especially in the playoffs. And I would take Coach Harbaugh next. That's a good one. The next guy I would take after Harbaugh is Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan has taken a lot of heat um, because – Obviously, they've lost two Super Bowls, but I think just getting there, the work he puts in, the preparation, the way this team is built, has been a lot of fun to see. Um, and I think he's going to continue to do that. I think he's going to continue to be out in front, to lead this team, to put them in all the right situations. So Kyle Shanahan's a guy I would definitely take, has a seventh-round quarterback playing like an all-pro player the last two years. So it's fun to see. Coach, you take the next two. Next two. Okay, I like it. And it's funny, <laughs> I got my draft board set up here, and we've taken the top five off, off the board already, so I think we're in, in good shape. But next, I'm going to go with a name that might surprise some people, D'Amico Ryans. He hasn't been around mm. long, but I love the way his team plays. I love the approach that they've had. Uh, he did a great job as defensive coordinator for the Niners. And then First year head coach taking the team to the playoffs and then, and then having a dominant game in the first round against Cleveland. I just love the way his players react to him. So I'm going with D'Amico Ryan's next. And then my next pick would be Doug Peterson. Mm. Again, another name that maybe some guys forget. Um, offensive coordinator, lights out in, in some big moments for Andy Reid. Matched up against Bill Belichick in the Super Bowl, put up almost 40 points uh, in a Super Bowl game against a, a defensive mastermind uh, and some really good players on, on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, I, I got a chance to cover the, the Jags, and I saw, again, how their players respond to him as a person, a, as a, a leader, and um, it, he's a guy I have a lot of respect for. Uh, I agree. I was I was on the field as those 40 points was going up and Nick Foles was throwing the ball all around on us. So uh, Doug Peterson, definitely one of the top coaches. Uh, the next pick I'm going to go is going to surprise people, too, because it's a risk taker. But I'm going to go Dan Campbell. And I think Dan Campbell took a team like Detroit, where a lot of us expected, like, OK, they had a good run at the end of the season before and they can now just make the playoffs. They're going to be in good shape. And then we kind of looked up and it was like, 
this team has a chance to maybe be in the Super Bowl as we got to the end of the season. And again, it goes back to these guys love playing for him. He's built a staff, a lot of former players in there, a lot of different guys who have great leadership qualities that guys want to play for. So, yes, is he going to take some chances and some risks that a lot of times when I watch I'm like, probably not. But I think that team loves doing that. I think as they move forward, I think they're going to continue to get the guys in there that can execute on some of those fourth down plays they fell short on. And I think Dan Campbell will be there giving this team a chance to win those big games. Who you got next, Coach? And for my fifth pick, I'm taking a little bit of a hometown pick, but a guy I have a lot of respect for, Todd Bowles. He's here in Tampa. Uh, he's taking teams to the playoffs. He's come up with some amazing defensive game plans against some of the, the great ones. And, again, he's a guy that his players love to play for. Uh, so in a big game uh, with equal footing, I, I like Todd Bowles a lot. I like it. And, and like you said, we got down all the way through. So now with my fifth pick, I'm going to go a little bit on the limb. I'm going to I'm going to take a chance here. Another defensive guy. Well, actually, no, I'm going to go offensive guy. I'm going to go with Mike McDaniel. I'm going to go Mike McDaniel in Miami. And I know it hasn't been perfect in some of the big games, but the way that they've been able to continue to play at a high level all throughout the season, they got to find a way to finish strong. A year ago, they had some injuries as they went to Buffalo and had to play without Tua. And then this year, going to Kansas City for a team in South Florida with historic temperatures was another tough battle, <laughs> freezing. So I think they got to figure out a way to find, find a way to get that number one seed and try to play at home, which would be tough with Kansas City. But again, I think Mike McDaniel has guys that believe in his method. They do the right things all throughout the season. I think they got to figure out how to be that team all the way throughout December and January. But this is a team that he comes in. Brian Flores had won nine games, nine games winning team. And he took them and he did what we talked about earlier, taking a team and now taking the next step. So now they're going to have to take another step for him. But he's a guy that I love watching. I got a chance to talk to him a few times. Just everything about him is authentic. And that I'm sitting there like, man, I, I think I would like playing for this guy. He's a little quirky, but he gets guys going because he's just himself. So uh, I think this is a pretty good list right here, Coach. I think we will win a lot of games with these guys. Yeah, I do like our list here, no, no doubt. And uh, what it is, it's a mixture, too. You've got some of the old guard. You've got some new guys. But I think the one thing with all 10 of these guys, Devin, is their players love playing for these guys. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, just a great group of guys. And I think the biggest thing is they're leaders of men. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this list, and we talked about it earlier. Bill Belichick's not coaching. If we had to do this list, where do you think he would fall in, Coach? Where would you put him on this list if you had to pick? We're trying to win one game, Devin. I'm calling him one first game. and see if he can come out of <laughs> retirement before I call any of these other guys. For one game, he's my guy. That's just so interesting. Everybody will talk about a bunch of different things, but my opportunity for 13 years to play for him anytime we had a bye week, the Super Bowl, anytime those things came up, his record would jump up in an article and it'd be like one loss, two loss since his time in New England. So there's no doubt about it. Extended time, one game. I'm picking Coach Belichick. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.